Revit provides tools for analyzing the energy use and calculating heating and cooling loads of your building project. You can perform an energy analysis using a mass model or building elements. Energy studies are most important early in the project, during conceptual design, when you can experiment with changes to the building shape before the building envelope is completely defined. That way, you can experiment with different forms and building orientation to determine which changes have the largest impact on energy consumption. The tools used to perform an energy analysis are found on the Analyze ribbon in the Energy Analysis panel. There are two modes for energy analysis. Use Conceptual Mass Mode and Use Building Element Mode. Depending on which mode is selected, the energy settings will be slightly different. First of all, realize that the energy analysis tools are a subscription-only feature. In order to run an energy analysis, you must be a Revit subscription customer. With Use Conceptual Mass Mode selected, Enable Energy Model is available. In Conceptual Mass Mode, you must first enable the energy model before you can run an energy simulation. However, with Use Building Element Mode selected, Run Energy Simulation is available, in which case, you would not have to enable the energy model first. Before you run any energy simulations or calculate heating and cooling loads, you should specify the energy settings. Click Energy Settings to open the Energy Settings dialog. In this dialog, some of the settings are used when you run an energy analysis and some are used when you use the Heating and Cooling Loads tool or export a GBXML file. And some are used for both. Looking in the Energy Model section, you can see that most of the parameters are grayed out. This is because they are only available in conceptual mass mode. So all the parameters that are available now affect the energy simulation in both modes. In the Common section, you can specify the building type and ground plane. The building type includes assumptions about the typical schedule of the building based on usage. When you click in this field, you can expand the drop-down and select a type from the predefined list. The ground plane is the ground plane reference. Any spaces below this level are considered to be underground. If you have not specified the location, you can do so now. When you click in the field, you can click the More button to open the Location, Weather, and Site dialog. In this dialog, on the Location tab, you can select the building location using the Internet Mapping Service or Default City List. Then you can specify the Weather Station on the Weather tab. The Weather Station only affects heating and cooling loads. Click OK to close the dialog and return to the Energy Settings dialog. The parameters in the Detailed Model section do not affect conceptual energy simulations. They are only used for calculating heating and cooling loads or when exporting the model to GBXML. The Export category can be set to Rooms or Spaces. Select Rooms. In the Export Complexity dropdown, you can specify the complexity level of the model. These options range from simple to complex, with and without shading surfaces or mullions. You can also select whether or not to include thermal properties. If you do, the thermal properties from the materials will be used. For the project phase, you can choose the proper building phase if necessary. Next, you can adjust the sliver space tolerance, which is the maximum distance that will be ignored before a shading surface is created. The building envelope parameter can be set to Use Function Parameter, 
or identify exterior elements. Use function parameter will use the function type parameter of walls, floors, and building pads to determine if the element is considered to be a part of the building envelope. When set to Identify Exterior Elements, you can control the analytical grid cell size. This is the base size of the 3D grid cells, or cubes, used to divide the building shell bounding box into a uniform cubical 3D grid. Change the export category to Spaces. Now additional settings are available. In the Building Service field, you can select one of the available HVAC system types. When you click in the Building Construction Value field, you can click the More button to open the Building Construction dialog. For Building Infiltration class, you can select Loose, Medium, Tight, or None to specify the estimated amount of outdoor air that enters the building through leaks in the building envelope. Next, you can select whether or not to export default values. Lastly, for the report type, you can choose the level of information provided in the Heating and Cooling Loads report. You can select Simple, Standard, or Detailed. In the last two sections of the dialog, Energy Model and Energy Model Building Services, the parameters affect the results of a conceptual energy analysis. The settings do not affect heating and cooling loads or an exported GBXML file. In the Energy Model section, the only parameters that are available during building element mode are Analytical Space Resolution and Analytical Surface Resolution. The analytical space resolution is the size of the largest gap through which analytical spaces will not leak. The analytical surface resolution is how accurately the boundaries of analytic surfaces match the ideal boundaries. You can also access the conceptual constructions, but they do not matter for building element mode. In the Energy Model Building Services section, you can specify the building operating schedule and the specifications for the HVAC system. When you click in either field, you can expand the drop down and choose the best option from a predefined list. You can also adjust the outdoor air information. Click Edit to open the outdoor air information dialog. Here, you can specify the outdoor air per person outdoor air per area, and the air changes per hour. To specify a value, simply select the checkbox next to the parameter you want to specify, and then enter a value. Click OK to close the dialog. Click OK to close the Energy Settings dialog, and then switch to Use Conceptual Mass Mode. Now when you open the Energy Settings dialog, you can see that the other parameters in the Energy Model section are available. Click Edit next to Conceptual Constructions to open the Conceptual Constructions dialog. Here, you can specify a conceptual construction for each of the mass model categories on the left. Simply click in the field, expand the drop down, and select the appropriate construction. Click OK to close the dialog. The core offset is the distance to measure inward from the exterior walls to define the core zone. You can then choose whether or not to divide perimeter zones. When selected, the perimeter of the building will be divided into four thermal zones, northeast, southeast, northwest, and southwest. The target percentage glazing is the percentage of exterior walls to be glazed openings and the target sill height is the distance from the floor to the bottom of the window. So as you can see, these parameters are not needed when using actual building elements. 
Next, you can select whether or not the glazing is shaded. When selected, you can specify the shade depth. Lastly, you can specify the target percentage skylights to analyze skylights in the model. And if the value is greater than zero, you can enter a skylight width and depth. The simulation will analyze square skylights. After all the appropriate settings have been specified, you are ready to perform the energy analysis or calculate heating and cooling loads.